All right. Well, uh, welcome back. Welcome back <laughs> uh, to um, Illustrator for Scientists uh, presentation. Uh, so Theo just asked me a question about uh, MATLAB. So can you state your question again? Sure. Uh, so the question is, when we plot a figure uh, and we resize the figure window for whatever reason, uh, whether that would uh, have any effect on the way it's uh, exported into the EPS file or anything? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so that's why you want to make sure that you set the width somehow, uh, set the size of the uh, of the figure somehow uh, at some point. So uh, you could, for example, use set uh, GCF position, right? And then you would set the, the position and the size of the window. Uh, the other option is to use with preview, uh, actually with the export fig file, um, you can use the options dot width, but it will change the the ratio of the uh, the out the, the size of the outlines to the size of the text. Um, yeah, so so it does matter. So just make sure that set it manually, either through uh, set position or ops dot width. Uh, all right, so now that we have some um, uh, some stuff, <laughs> some uh, some plots and some equations, uh, we're going to show how to uh, actually place this stuff inside of a document. Uh, so let's just start with a new document in Illustrator. Great. Um, so to set, so I'm going to import a couple of other things as well. Not this one. But let's say this guy. All right, a bunch of plots. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, uh, so selecting things is, is really, really easy. You just uh, use this black arrow tool uh, for which the, um, the, the, the shortcut is V. Uh, so if you're any other tool, let's say type, you just press V and you end up uh, with this black arrow. Unfortunately, you can't see it on the screen capture software. Uh, but you should know that I am using the black arrow right now. Um, now, the other shortcuts that you absolutely need to know uh, are Z, which changes you to um, the uh, zoom tool. Uh, you can press Alt to go back with the zoom tool. Uh, and you would also want to use the space bar uh, to be able to drag the document around. Because uh, oftentimes the palettes in, uh, in Illustrator will, won't allow you to actually see the scroll bars. Um, so to select things, you simply uh, click along and it'll select everything that is touching uh, the outline of the rectangle um, that you're creating so even though I'm only I, I'm, I'm not like selecting the whole plot it'll select it by itself um, so um, now to create a larger selection you want to use the shift tool that's kind of standard uh, you can use control a to select everything that's kind of obvious um, Okay, so the more interesting stuff now, uh, there's the select menu, and then you can select, uh, for example, uh, different types of objects. So you can select all the text objects uh, in, um, uh, in your uh, file. Uh, or you can, if you have something already selected, you can select everything uh, which has the same fill and stroke, let's say. So that's often useful if you need. So for example, if we wanted to select all the dots here, uh, that that might be a useful way to do it, but there are actually other ways to do it, um, which are even awesomer. Uh, so select wand tool uh, or a magic wand tool. Uh, so you just click here, as you see, uh, because uh, like it, it uses some like crazy algorithm, which I'm not really sure how it works to determine things that are related to the current selection. So now it's selected all of these dots in the scatter plot so that we could, for example, change colors. And that's a lot less painful than actually trying to 
select the thing and then unselecting the title and <laughs> the labels of the axes and all these things to just get at this. The other option that you have, so yeah, once again, the other option that you have is the uh, lasso tool, uh, which is uh, located uh, again in this uh, bunch of selection tools. So you can, for example, just select these uh, dots or this text to just by going around it. So that's really uh, th so. This is, these are really really basic things, but uh, trust me, uh, these things are going to be really useful um, for doing some of the crazy things, which I'm going to show you next. Yeah, so sorry about that. I just got a little bit distracted by somebody walking into the lab, which tends to happen a lot. Um, so the next portion now we know how to select stuff is uh, is moving stuff. Um, so moving stuff in 2D, you've got again the arrow tool which you can uh, you can use. Uh, so you can just drag things along to move them around. Obviously, uh, now. The more interest, oh yeah. So you you've got the arrows, uh, which uh, are on the keyboard, the left, right, and so forth arrows. If you press Shift arrow, you're going to uh, move by a larger amount. Sometimes it happens that the amount is not quite right, uh, like it moves too slow or too fast when you press the arrow keys. So to fix that, you want to go into Edit, Preferences, and General, and that's where you have the keyboard increment thing so that if you choose, for example, some crazy increment of five points, uh, then just by pressing the arrow, you're moving it by a lot, and shift is going to change it a very large amount. Uh, actually, there's the keyboard shortcut for that is Control K. Very useful to know. So I'm just gonna reset it to something more reasonable. Um, so those are the basics. Uh, oftentimes what you want to do is align things, um, you know, make them like on a nice grid or something. Here, like everything's disaligned. Uh, so you can uh, set up. So first of all, you want to sh use sh uh, show rulers, right? And this pops up these rulers over here. So now uh, these rulers are in units of points uh, because that's the way the document was set up. But you can change that. Um, to something different using document setup, which is in the file menu. Uh, and you change the units, for example, to inches, uh, which is you know, more logical. And that will also change the units of these rulers. So once you have the rulers, then so when you just have your selection tool, your, um, your black arrow, just click on the ruler and you can drag a guide, right? like so. So uh, now I, I don't know if you can see it at home, but uh, there's like this little blue outline over here uh, for the guide. Uh, so one easy way to just align things is to drag them over next to the guide. There you go. And that's one way of aligning things. Um, you can create uh, hor uh, horizontal guides as well, clearly. Uh, you can select these guides and delete them. Uh, another option that you that, that's quite useful is to uh, lock the guides. Uh, so you can uh, in guides here you can set them up to uh, to lock them so that if you uh, say click here it won't select the guide. You know so they they have a separate locking mechanism compared to these other guides. So I, I would advise just 